My Tesla just got a new software update. Let's go see what this thing does. Ludicrous fart. Hey guys, today I'm reviewing a portable air inflator. Why do I need one? Let's go take a look. So I've been inflating the tires on my cars and bikes with this guy over here. I've been using this air compressor for a few years now. Uh, it's run up here to my extendable hose where, you know, I've been inflating tires with this. You can also use it for your pneumatic tools. Um, it, it does a lot of things that I like, but this setup is expensive, it's stationary, and it's also very loud. If you've never used one of these things, check this thing out. So yeah, it's very loud. It wakes up the whole house, the neighbors. So don't get me wrong, an air compressor is still a valuable tool for any garage or workshop. A lot of pneumatic tools will need to have the air compressor and it does a good job overall. There are a few concerns though that you need to maintain it. You need to make sure that you always release all the air out of the tank when you're done with it. One of the byproducts of making air is water. So the last thing you want is water in a metal tub like that because it can rust out over time, weaken the sidewall and you could have a blowout which is not good. So I'll continue to use this air compressor for big jobs or if I need to inflate my tires really quick, but I've got a new solution that's a portable air compressor with a couple other benefits added. So a big thank you to today's sponsor, Denvix. They make this portable air compressor that has a few other features, including an LED light that you can either have solid or have it flash. You could have it flash red for emergencies. Um, it also has a rapid charger with some USB ports if you need to charge a smartphone or something else. Uh, but let's take a look and see what we've got here. All right, this is the product. You see how small and compact it is. I just screwed in this hose here. This can detach. Uh, it does come with a carrying case and I'll show you that with whatever else comes with it, the adapters and whatnot. Uh, let's take a quick look at that. This is the carry case. It's very nice quality. Um, zips closed so you don't lose anything. You've got your manual in there, but you also have a charging cable as well as a 12 volt uh, cigarette adapter and a couple other little valves here that you can uh, air up basketballs and different types of uh, tires and whatever kind of valve they have on it, they've got adapters for you. And here in the US, most tires have what's called a Schrader valve, and that's the typical tire valve that you see on most cars here. So just without any adapter at all, this will fit onto a Schrader valve and it screws on. The good thing is that the tip does rotate, so you don't have to worry about rotating the entire hose. So just the tip you can rotate onto a Schrader valve on your car, and uh, it will test the pressure, and you can set it to a desired pressure, and it'll inflate to that pressure without you having to do anything else. So one thing to note is if you're airing up just bicycle tires, uh, it does have the PSI settings here. But if you're gonna be uh, inflating vehicle tires, they've got it set to bar levels here, which we don't really use bar here in the US. That's more of a global thing where everyone else uses bar. Uh, but in the US, we use PSI. So there is a workaround. I'll show you how to do that, and it's actually even better. I thought it was funny. The uh, vehicle list here it says standard, micro car, sports car, wagon, pickup truck, MPV tires, and Tesla tires. Specifically, Tesla tires is listed in the vehicle. There's not anything special about Tesla tires. Uh, other EVs have similar tires as Tesla, but I uh, still think it's cool that they mentioned Tesla here. All right, if you press the power button once, 
It will show you the battery level. Right now it says 75%. Um, if you press and hold, it'll power up the unit. And now you can scroll through with this button here, what you wanna look at. So right now it's set to vehicles, which is set to bar. You can scroll through here. Now that's motor scooters, bicycles, balls. But this last one is the one I wanna show you. This is an individual setting that you can customize. I've got it set to 42 PSI, and that's what I'm gonna use for my Teslas. If you need to raise or lower that, you can lower it or add like that. All you have to do is attach the hose to the tire, press the button, and it will automatically uh, inflate the tire to the setting. A Couple other features is there is a light, which is this bar back here. So if I press the light, it does shine pretty bright. Let me press it again. And that dims it to more of an amber color. Let's press it one more time. Now it's flashing red. The last feature here is there is a charge port. There's a USB-A and a USB-C that you can use to charge your phone. And uh, so you can kind of use it as a power bank. On a side note, once you set the settings to where you want it, every time you use this, it will remember what that setting is. So you don't have to keep configuring this every time. In case you don't know what setting to inflate your tires to, it's listed in two different places on the side of the car. Right here, it says 42 PSI. Also up here, it says 42 PSI. But Tesla will actually update this on the screen. So if you go to your service settings, you can look at the PSI of the tires here. If you look here, Tesla will recommend what the cold pressure should be. Uh, right now, it's currently recommending 42 PSI there as well. There have been times throughout the year where this will change. The front was 42, but the rear was 43 PSI. So maybe dependent on how warm it is outside, uh, they may change that. So I've been driving the car and that's why it's up higher because it's remembering what it was at when I was driving it around. So you can see that these all match, except this one's a little bit low. So we'll test this out by airing that one up. And for those that don't know, cold pressure has nothing to do with the temperature outside. You can still have cold pressure in a hot climate. What this basically means is after the car has been sitting and it hasn't been turned on or driven, uh, that's what the cold pressure is. Once you start driving, it warms up the air in the tires. And as you know, when air heats up, it expands. So that's why you get a higher PSI when it's warmer and it, you've been driving for a while. So even though you set it to 42 PSI, it will rise to 45. That is normal. That's what it's supposed to be doing. But what Tesla is recommending is before it warms up, while it's cold, go ahead and set it to 42 and then let it do its thing after that. All right, so I'm gonna test this out on that front tire that's a little bit lower than the others. Let's see what uh, the reading it gives. All right, so the device was reading that it was 43 PSI, so I had to bump it up to 45 just to match the other tires. And let's go back inside the car and see what it does. So I just went into my service settings and selected the TPMS learning, so it's learning the new pressures. Let's see what uh, happens here. Once you press that TPMS uh, learning button, you do need to drive it for a little bit and that will recalibrate and it'll come up to the new settings. And that brought it up to 45, so now they all match. And if you're looking for all the specifications, you can pause the video here. You can see it's less than 80 decibels as far as how loud it is. 
Uh, there's your output settings for the charger. Yeah, everything is, is pretty good. It does, it says it's two and a half pounds. It feels pretty heavy for what it is. Um, but uh, let's go see where we can fit this thing. This is small enough to fit anywhere. You could put it underneath your armrest, but it's not something I would think that you would need from the cabin. So I'm gonna put mine off in this storage area here. I think there's plenty of room. Uh, you can fit all sorts of things. Put your hats. I like to keep a microfiber towel. You just put whatever you want over there out of the way. But yeah, it, it fits perfect. All right, so here's my final thoughts. Overall, I think it's a great product. I've only got one complaint, and that is I think it should have one more button where you can toggle between bar and PSI. I think that would be a game changer. Uh, most of the world uses bar settings, but over here in the US, we pretty much use PSI for everything. So I would recommend on revision two to add a toggle switch where you can convert the bar to PSI and back and forth. Other than that though, I think it's great. It's got a nice carry case. It's got all the adapters you need. You can plug it into the 12 volt power source uh, cigarette lighter adapter. I like that it's battery powered so you don't have to plug it in if you don't need to. And I also like that it's not so crazy loud that you're gonna annoy everyone around you when you're using it. So do any of you guys keep portable air inflators in your car? If so, which ones do you recommend? So that's all I've got for you today, guys. If you like the video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up. And if you wanna see more Tesla content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You'll be notified when new videos come out and I will see you guys in the near future. Bye-bye.